Well, we're here at the Academy Sports and Outdoors Rigs and Techniques at the yes, CCA sir. Workbench. Dave, tunas is our topic tonight. How are we going to catch them? Well, I got like 13 things to say. So first off, you know, tuna, like I said before, they're one of the most pursued fish. So, you know, you got to be careful when you're chasing these fish. They get a little bit wary sometimes because um, they're, they're getting pounded a lot. Everybody wants to catch a tuna fish. So, you know, you need to take that into consideration. Uh, tuna have excellent eyesight. And they have really good color vision, which is, is rare among fishes. You know, not all fishes can see a lot of colors, but tunas can. So it's very important to try to match the hatch with the size and the color. Mostly the size, though. You know, uh, when, when, you see, when you see tuna fish eating and you can't see what they're eating, always assume that it's something really tiny. And you bring down your, your offerings to, to that, uh, try to match whatever it is. And if you catch one and it starts burping up little squids and stuff this size, you know that you're going to get a lot more bites if you pull baits this big. Mm -hmm. and, it doesn't, and it doesn't matter how big the bait is. You know, you want to get the bite. If you're using a nice heavy-duty live bait hook inside that little tiny uh, skirt, that's all you really need. You just need a, a heavy enough hook that'll hang on once that mate grabs the leader on that, on, you know, it has to hold 40 pounds generally, because you're gonna be probably using 40 pound fluorocarbon leader to try to get these tuna fish to bite, right. you know? Um, when we see them uh, up on the surface, a lot of times we're out chasing birds because I live up where Jim does. So we have to go, like he said, all the way across the Gulf Stream if we want to catch yellowfin tunas. Blackfin tunas will hang around the shrimp boats and stuff with the bonitas and whatnot. But if we really want to catch yellowfin tunas to eat, we got to go across the Gulf Stream. And we're looking on our radars trying to find the birds. And a good rule of thumb is if you find a little scattering of birds, go ahead and ignore that one. Because if you run over there, the odds are it's going to be a bunch of little skipjacks and black fins. Mm -hmm. Now, if you see that big bird nato, you know, with yeah, giant yeah. Uh, frigate birds and everything else involved and the tuna birds, that's probably going to be the, the best bet to start pulling your stuff around that. You know, go ahead and make the run to that thing and ignore those little tiny you know, twos and fuse birds, because they're usually around <clears throat> those smaller tunas, and we're out there wanting to catch big tunas. So, you know, a lot of times we'll use a cedar plug, the cedar plugs of all different shapes and sizes. These are very common. What, what makes the cedar plug work so cool is, is it pulls from the back. When you're, when you're going along, it'll pull from the back and it wobbles like crazy and it looks like a little bait fish darting that these fish are eating on the surface. What happens is, is these tuna will push the bait up to the surface and that's and that's how we see them and it can actually get a bait in front of them and they and they will eat all kinds of things um, a lot of the things that we like to use try to mimic a flying fish uh, so a lot of the stuff that we'll use will be blue and white or even like that <laughs> the little flying fish like little that little gummy yeah gummy. exactly and you know if you're not getting bit with these things and you've already went down in size go ahead and start getting your stuff a little bit further back from the boat because again, like I said, the, the more that you're out there chasing these things, there's another 50 guys out there doing the same thing. And those schools get pounded pretty hard and they get, they get really wary. So a lot of times you'll have to put your stuff way back. And when you see these schools, you want to try to get up in front of them. You know, you don't want to go plowing through them from behind or coming through the side. And it, and it makes a lot of sense to tell the boys downstairs or, or in the back of the boat saying, hey, I see a bunch of tunas up there. Let's get all this stuff rigged up before we get up there and, and so I can make a good pass. Right. You know, getting that good pass with all the right stuff in the water is key. You know, you, if you get up there and make a, a good pass and you've got the big stuff out still, you're not going to get a bite. If you, get all, if you get all the good stuff out, but the captain comes right through the middle of the school and doesn't get out in front of him and let the baits come in front of the school instead of the boat, then you're not going to get a bite. And, you know, that's the key to a tuna is getting the bites out of them. Once you find that little pattern, what they're eating, and you start getting bites, they're fairly easy to catch after that, except for the pain they give you. Because unlike a blue marlin that stupid and comes to the surface and jumps, once you get a big tuna on, he's going straight to the bottom. And it's been the big pin wheels. Yeah, people of, think pin amberjack. Wheels of pain. People think those. amberjack fight hard, but tunas are worse. Bree yeah. knows about those pinwheels of pain. I remember <laughs> the pinwheels of pain very well.